love that dad music intro. They call it dad music. <laughs> I don't know, Eve. I'm Dave Warnock. This is Dying Out Loud. It is Tuesday, October 24th, 2023. And I'm joined tonight by my wonderful friend, co-host Eve Was Framed. What's Hi, up, everybody. Eve? Hello. <laughs> Thanks so much for having me. I'm so excited oh. to hang out with you. You know, most some folks may re remember that you were my very first co-host on this Dying Out Loud show. I remember. And, it was so much fun. Yeah, it's always good to get with you. We don't do that often enough. But how are you doing? Great. What's new? What's catch us up with Eve's um, world? That is a great question. I feel like I'm coming back to life after kind of taking the summer to work on moving. I've been moving cities and um, I'm now in Tennessee. Uh, I was in Atlanta and, and I'm full time Eve. Um, I had a career as a house manager nanny and now I'm going to be working full time on getting my book out, speaking engagements, hanging out with you, doing things like this, um, and getting a lot more content out. So I'm really excited. You should be doing this full time because you rock <laughs> at it, girl. I well, just love thank you. what you do, what you've been doing all these years. And I'm a huge fan of yours and really glad that we've gotten to know each other and spend time together. And I've been in transition too. So yeah. we're back in the same area. And Yay. we should get to spend more time together. Yes. Maybe we can do one of these shows in the same room together someday. Oh, that'd be fun. That'd be fun. Yeah. yeah. So I, I want to let everybody know it's a call-in show. We've got lines open. We want to hear from you. 720-619-2288. As you know, on this show, we talk a lot about life and purpose in life and meaning in life. Because as you know, I'm dying out loud. I've got ALS. My life is ebbing away um, as you know, I, I do a lot of talks, the talks I've given in the last year or so I do a thing where I start out um, where I tell everyone in the audience that we have two things in common. Uh, we've all been born and we're all going to die. And that's when everybody goes, what? We're going to die. No, they don't. Everybody, everybody knows that, but, we don't really talk about it. It's, it's kind of this thing that is, is understood, but it's not at the forefront of our thinking. It's not a part of our conversation. Right. But what I've been doing in the last four years is bringing it into the conversation because with the terminal illness um, and the uh, progression of a terminal illness, whereas my body continues to get worse, and you see it over time and you realize, yeah, it, you, you kind of see the dying in real time. It's not, it's not something that happens like you don't notice it week to week. Like when you see me from one week to another, you won't notice a, a lot of difference. When you see me from six months to another, you do notice a difference. And, mm -hmm. and so um, having the conversation out loud about it, dying out loud, has, has been an interesting experience because it's it's the reaction i get from people um is varied and mixed but it's consistent in that most people find that they've 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 found that they've in, not enjoyed but they're glad to be able to talk about it if you will to, yeah to talk it's a about, relief to yeah a relief that's a good word so mm -hmm. how, how would you i mean Elaborate on that. How would you say it's a relief? I think because like you said, it is something that's going to happen to all of us. It's something um, most, if not all of us experience around us at some point or another in our lives. It, death is a massive part of life. And yeah, it's one of the main things we don't talk about. Um, it's scary. And I think normalizing it and talking about it um, is really healing for those that have lost someone or those that have fear of death someday, which a lot of us that were in the religious community, I think, had that happening because so much of it is like a death cult. Um, mm -hmm. And yet we don't talk about death, which is so interesting. But uh, yeah, I yeah. think it's really, it's really relieving. And I think it adds so much more value um, when you acknowledge that part of life, that, that it does have an end, that 
um, there is only so much that we can be guaranteed. And uh, that's why I love what you do. Do you ever have pushback where people, uh, you know, their fear comes out more and they get upset with you for talking about that? Like they think it's only not uh, appropriate. Only Christians. <laughs> yeah. only Christians. They, you know, and, yeah. and it's, it's supposed to be, you know, the Christians are the ones that are supposed to be victorious over death. You know, that death has no more right. sting and, and there's, there's no end. There's no death. You just live forever. Mm -hmm. And yet they're the ones who are the most terrified of talking about it and the most mystified yeah. about it. It's been a puzzling thing to experience that. And they don't like talking about death. Whereas mm -hmm. I've, I've never had pushback from free thinkers or atheists or secular people when, when I, now there's put, even with pushback, when you talk about death with di dignity or some of the, the, uh, assisted suicide kind of things that, that that's even in that community is only Christians who push back against that. Like you're not supposed to play God. You're not supposed to, uh, right. Take things into your own hands. And that's, that's just, Again, the ideas about death that Christians hold are mystifying to me, you know, that I don't understand why they're so scared of it, but yeah. they are. Right. Uh, I, have a, I have a friend whose dad is like 92 or three, and he's been as, a Christian his whole life, and my friend's an atheist, and he's, he's come out to his dad recently. Um, and his dad's confessed to him that he's terrified of dying. Mm -hmm. He's just like, as he nears the end of it, and he yeah. says, he says, why? And he says, well, what if I got it wrong? What if I believed the wrong thing? Mm -hmm. And because, because the Christians have put so much weight on after death and heaven and hell, the yeah. stakes are pretty high. And if you did yeah. get it wrong, if you did get it wrong, then that you're in trouble. Whereas with us, there's nothing to get wrong. You live, mm -hmm. you do your best with your life, and then you end. That's it. Right. Well, it's I think I think that yeah, that's exactly what it is. When I I was terrified of death as a Christian, ironically, and I think that was because I knew my afterlife was based on my ability to believe something correctly or not and i felt like the afterlife was in my own hands which is very anxiety inducing um when in reality as an atheist i've accepted that the afterlife is what it is which is probably nothing and there's nothing i can do about it it is completely out of my hands and the freedom in that mm -hmm. to let go because now i don't have to put my time into worrying about that my time can go into right now What's happening yeah. right now? How can I make this good? Because this is what I do know is happening. This is part of what's in my control is my response to each present moment. I'm not having to sit here. I remember it being like five years old sitting in bed and after having a bad attitude or something like praying like, dear Jesus, if, if you came out of my heart today, please come back in because I'm so scared I'm going to go to hell. You know, that was like as a child feeling like I had to manage my afterlife. That's so anxiety inducing. Mm. How long did it take you? You've been, I mean, you've, you've been deconstructed for a while and deconverted, but you've been in this, in this space doing Eve was framed. How long did it take you or have you even gotten clear of that fear of death or hell or any of those afterlife thoughts? Yeah, I think fear of death and hell were some of the first things to go for me, actually, which was really nice because I, yeah. I know a lot of people still struggle with that. To me, those things had to go first so that I even felt comfortable questioning if there was a God or not. Um, mm -hmm. my, the way I thought it through was if there is an all good, all loving, all knowing God, which is the only God I would ever worship, then he wouldn't send me to hell for trying to figure out if hell is even real or not. And so I was able to kind of let go of that enough to start then reading and learning more about mm -hmm. why that was just silly and didn't line up with reality. So I was, I was lucky. What about you though? I mean, you, you've had to kind of deal with all of this in stages because of, you know, you, you became an atheist first and then you had your diagnosis. Was there like any kind of overlap with fear between those things? 
No, I, I was, my deconstruction process was layered in that I let things go in, in parts and how I was, you know, I wasn't indoctrinated as a kid. So I didn't mm -hmm. really have that um, indoctrination about hell. It wasn't part of my formulative, formulative thinking as a kid. So it wasn't something that was deeply ingrained in me. And the faith right. that I practiced was more about how God wanted to bless you and work in your life and live now, more of the faith gospel kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so hell wasn't a big part of the mix. So letting go of hell wasn't hard for me. And I don't, I've never right. had, I've never had, um, fears or, you know, people wake, I know friends of mine who wake up in, you know, night sweats and stuff because they had this yeah. indoctrination about hell. I never really dealt with that. And so I, it wasn't a hard thing to let go. And then after, mm -hmm. you know, I was deconstructed quite a bit, quite a while before I was diagnosed with ALS. So, it didn't didn't move the needle at all for me. Yeah. Yeah. So not not a thing. I wanted to ask yeah. you something. Um, because I've I meant I talked to you before about this. I wanted to remind everyone also before we jump, uh, we got calls coming in, I hope that we can get to quickly. Uh, we want to talk to you about anything having to do with death, dying, purpose, and Eve's um what what you do deconstruction why did you start doing that and and what is it that makes you so popular <laughs> i don't know that i'm very are. popular you are oh, well you thank you following. my my biggest fan right here um no uh so i i started doing it uh, it's funny i was trying to stay anonymous i um i grew up a pastor's daughter and my parents still have a pretty well-known ministry in the charismatic evangelical world. Uh, my sisters all work full time for them. You know, it's like a family thing. And so I kind of just wanted to like stay out of that limelight that I'd grown up in, a uh, grown up in, in a way. And, um, but I also just felt so detached from community and I was watching people <laughs> post some of their doubts and, you know, on Facebook, just seeing different friends and then getting shut down immediately. And I felt pretty confident and secure with my lack of belief. But I had remembered when I felt absolutely crazy for it. I was I felt like I was the only person in the history of the world to ever, which I knew that wasn't true, but I felt like I was completely alone in my questioning. And I found accounts like yours. I found um, I was binge watching any debate with Matt Dillahunty that I could find. I was, you know, I was taking in all of that kind of content, but I, I didn't feel like I was getting to engage with other people. And I felt like my story could be helpful to some others to hear like, it's the big sister in me that like, you're not crazy. It's okay to question. It's okay to take a look at this stuff. Um, and and I, it's not that I wanted people to become an atheist. I just wanted people to feel freedom to ask the questions that I asked. And so I started sharing a little bit here and there um, on Facebook and instantly, that didn't go over well because people <laughs> were copying and pasting what I was saying on my private Facebook over onto my parents' ministry page. Mm -hmm. That was basically, I was saying like the opposite of what they were saying. And that's not great for family dynamics. <laughs> no. Um, and I didn't want to, I did not want to deal with that. And so I, I stopped for a bit and then I was like, no, this was really resonating with people and it's important for them to not feel alone. So I made an anonymous account on Instagram and then on TikTok. And then stuff went viral. And I was like, well, Whoa. I guess this is happening now. Um, and I think that it's, I think from what I've heard, the feedback from people and why what I do has, has taken off and why people do resonate with what I have to say is I have, I'm such an overthinker and I have thought about all this stuff so many times that I've been able to condense it into short responses. Um, and from what I've heard, that's really helpful to people so that they can either within themselves feel more okay about where they landed. I'm not saying anything new. I'm not saying groundbreaking things that nobody's ever thought of. I think I've just found a way to communicate it in simple mm -hmm. terms that they can then use that to communicate back with people that are asking them questions. They can use my words to have conversation with family that maybe would have taken 
a little bit longer, but right. TikTok only gives you 60 seconds. So I learned, I learned to get fast with my communication. So I don't know. I yeah, know that answers have your a, question, but you have, no, you have a great ability to crystallize thoughts and in, succinctly that are just, you don't waste words. You, you just get, get in and get the message. It's you're, you're right. It's nothing. It's not groundbreaking, profound, uh, information. It's, it's, it's just the way you say it and it just resonates. And I've been with you and I, I've seen what you do in response to your, to your, uh, followers. When you get messages and questions, I've seen the hours you put in to, uh, respond to them. And they can tell you really care. You really care how someone's doing and how they're processing their deconstruction. It's really beautiful because Thank you're you. so genuine and so thoughtful. And you know, because you experienced it, you know how hard it can be. You know how painful yeah. it can be with family and friends and feeling disoriented and lost and confused. Yeah. And so you've really been able to capture that and help people in ways that I I just find amazing. And I'm just I'm just Thank you. I'm just really happy to be your friend. And I'm just you're right. I'm a super Aww. fan because you do such great work. And I'm so thankful for what you bring to the people that need help. Thank you. In, in the most ways. So keep doing that. Thank you. I don't know if people do people know how we met was because. Um, well, I had been following your stuff, but I don't know if you knew that, but you, when I first started out, like within the first couple of months, I didn't even have any kind of big following or anything. Um, I think you saw something of mine and you reached out and you were like, this is so good. Like, I want to support you. How can I help you? And I was like, Dave Warnock is reaching out to me. And I was like, can we have a phone call? And you were like, absolutely. And you were so kind and we instantly connected. And I was able to talk to you about stuff with my family because you have very similar mm -hmm. background to to my parents and um you just took me under your wing immediately and then you're like want to come to the beach with me and my friends i was like yeah okay i, yeah, I do yeah, and yeah. instantly you gave me community and friends that i could have only imagined and um i don't that was uh that was a big part of my my eve was framed journey and helping me feel validated and supported and not like i was just flailing out here doing my thing all by myself so I'm, I'm, I'm your biggest fan right back. That's I'm, I'm, I'm happy about that. You have far surpassed anything I'm doing, but I'm really, Aww. really happy to have been a part of that. Let's talk to someone that wants to talk to us because they're calling us and we want to, we have rich he, him in Oregon. Hey, rich, you're on dying out loud with even Dave on the line. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty well, considering. That's I wonderful. I want to say thank you, Dave. I want to say thank you, Dave. To, uh, you're such an encouragement to me because I go through Parkinson's as I watch you with the ALS and you're holding up so well with this uh, crappy hand life has given you. Well, thank you. Thank you. How, how are you doing? Well, I took a fall about the same time that you did about a month ago. And I'm having to get a walker now, and it's really affecting my walking ability and my endurance. But mm. I identify with a lot of what you're going through, although I think mine is a lot slower. It, well, it doesn't progress as fast as what you're going through. Well, how long have you been dealing with it? Oh, about uh, 12 years now. Okay, yeah, it's definitely And I going. had triple bypass five years ago, too. And mm -hmm. I've, ever since wow. my triple bypass, I've been... Uh, not seeing God at all in my life. And I've been, uh, after reading Dietrich Bonhoeffer, living my life as if there's no God. Well, and so I, it doesn't really matter to me whether there's God or not, because oh. I got to live my life anyway. So you've recently yeah. begun, you've recently begun living as there's no God. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. How's that doing? How's that going for you? Actually, it's a lot more easier and a lot more free than I thought it would be. Yeah, I haven't really come out to anybody yet, but I just uh, when I left the church, nobody seemed to notice. Oh, really? 
What kind of church were you in? Uh, the last one was an AG, Assembly. Assembly of God. The Pentecostal church. Yeah, we know that, don't we, Eve? <laughs> oh, yeah. We know that, oh, Amo. Yeah. <laughs> and nobody noticed when you left? Anymore? Nobody noticed when well, you I left? I didn't notice, but nobody's really called me. Nobody's really called me to ask me what's going on. Wow. Man. What about your family? How has that affected family or friends for you? Well, the family doesn't really notice it too much. I just got to keep my mouth closed, and I'm polite, and and I just mind my own business. I got okay. a couple of daughters that uh, would be interested in having more involved discussions, but we haven't got there yet. Yeah. So you're just taking it slow and not really telling anybody that you're looking at life as though there's no God. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, and I'm also listening to Owen and Paul and Vice Rhino and all, that a whole bunch. They're really informing me quite a bit with what stuff I wasn't aware of before. Yeah. What was the what was your connection with Dietrich Bonhoeffer? You just said you used to read a lot of his stuff. Yeah, the last one was his letters and papers from prison, where he talked about after realizing that the people that he had easy easier time in prison with were the atheists, the Christians oh, really? were kind of a burden on him. And he he started realizing mm -hmm. that it looks like mankind has come of age, and they don't need God anymore. He even writes that the God hypothesis is really not any useful help to him. Huh. Interesting. And so, in letters and papers from prison, he was developing a theology that didn't need God in our practical day-to-day -day life at, just before they executed him. Okay. I didn't realize that. Well, in yeah, your... That's what's kind of... What's kind of Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, well, that's kind of what got me started on this particular phase of my life. Gotcha. So prior to, I mean, you've had Parkinson's for all this time, and for the most time you were living with it with a God belief, and now you are living with it with, without a God belief. So how has that affected your outlook on life how does that affect mm -hmm. your attitude or how you live your daily life if at all actually it's given me a lot more positive than i had before uh, before i have people who always come up and say well we'll pray for you we'll pray for you rebuke that spirit of parkinson's <laughs> and people would prophecy over me and all this kind of stuff and yeah. that was really discouraging because i knew that i had to go through life anyway and now mm -hmm. I don't have these people putting these ex expectations on me. I get to draw my own chart. Did you, yeah. since you were Assembly of God, I know Eve, Eve and I are from those similar backgrounds, and there's a lot of people praying for healing and, um, I mean, believing that God would heal you from Parkinson's or heal me from ALS. Did you, did you subscribe to that? mindset when you were a Christian thinking God was going to heal you or did you think he had given you this disease because there was something wrong with you or lack of faith or testing you or what was your attitude about it as a Christian well there was a little bit of all of that at various times but I watched my pastor's wife her dad had Parkinson's and he was not getting any better he just had to live it out and ended up dying eventually but you know, and they, they said they were standing in faith, waiting for something. But it seems like everybody I know is waiting for something and waiting for something that ain't going to come. And as, and as I read the scriptures, I was, I'd already been disaffected from the rapture and time stuff. I knew that wasn't, mm -hmm. wasn't kosher. And I was just seeing more and more of the, the young earth creationism, the prophecy, mm -hmm. the... Uh, all these expectations that people had that were unrealistic and not supported by the Bible. Yeah, that never stops them. Not at all. Yeah, my my grandfather actually had Parkinson's, and he was um, a missionary and pastor basically his entire life. Um, 
And it was, you know, looking back, I've had to kind of process the fact that he was surrounded by people. I don't know what he really believed. He was not, he was a man of few words. He was also a World War II vet. And, um, you know, I assume that he was believing these things because he was praying it for other people, but everyone was just like, he's going to get healed someday. And basically just watching this weird thing where our family believed in healings and, uh, and all these charismatic things and prophecies, but then it wasn't playing out in our own grandfather's life. The one who like started all of this right. Christian journey basically. And it was, it was really sad to realize once I lost my faith that he spent his last years had to either be believing something that never happened for him or being disappointed that it wasn't happening. Like he never got to just accept where he was mm -hmm. and live his life from that point. And so I'm so happy for you, Rich, that you are getting to do this on your own terms. And um, I'm so sorry that you're, that you're dealing with this disease, but so happy that you're getting to process it um, in reality, <laughs> you know, and not denying what's happening. Yeah, one of the things I'm rather appreciative of is I seem to have a generally positive attitude toward life in general. Mm -hmm. And so people think it's a lot of faith, but it's just being a basic optimist. Yeah. Yeah, I can yeah. tell you've got, I can tell in your voice that you do. I've, I just, that whole idea of praying for it, I just heard from a young a couple this, this week um, who his dad died of ALS a few years back. And his wife was telling me about how hard it was on him because his mom was believing in faith that he would be healed while, while the son was caring for him and holding him up in the shower and dealing with the physical mm -hmm. difficulties of what ALS does to you and yeah. everyone around ex expecting him to be healed and no one other than the son is just dealing with the reality of it. And, and it just did such a number on him that he can't even talk about it and process it in a healthy way. There's so much trauma and and um, mm. damage done because you're not dealing, as Eve said, you're not dealing with reality. Yeah. I had a friend years ago whose brother had ALS, and I had to watch them go through that. That was about 20-some years ago. And then about 10 years ago, I had another friend who had cancer, terminal, and I wanted to go see her one day just to say, are you ready? Uh, if God doesn't raise you up, are you ready to go? Just to check in with her. But her husband wouldn't even let me in the door because they were standing in faith that God was going to raise her from the dead. And even when they had the funeral, they'd put her in a wedding dress expecting her to be raised from the coffin. And I'm glad uh, I wasn't there for that debacle. Yeah, that's, that's so sad because it just robs them of so much that they could be experiencing in that process of living and dying. That's, it's, yeah. it's something that exactly. is robbed. Yeah. And it's sad. Yeah. So it's an adventure. Um, it isn't always fun, but it's an adventure. It is indeed. I'm sorry about your fall. And, um, those are always difficult. I, like you mentioned, I fell, I was, I was, you know, I always share when stuff happens. I haven't fallen in a while. But when you do, it just does a number on your head. I mean, you can hit your head and hurt your head, but mentally, <laughs> when I, what I, and I did actually, but oh, men, mentally it can fuck with you. It's it because you just realize you're losing so much of yourself. And mm -hmm. so it's hard. Yeah. It's hard for that. And I, and I know you're dealing with that, Rich. So really, I'm sorry to hear that. Well, was, I, I just spent an evening in the ER getting it stitched up because I broke my glasses and cut my temple open. Uh, and so that was about, I would have bled, bled out had I not had some help to get, get, get me uh, up and about pretty quickly. So do sorry. You have good, do you have good help? Do you have people with you helping you? Yes, I do. Good. It's uh -huh. it's very necessary as time goes by, as you know. Yeah, although I have to admit the uh, 
the loneliness of walking as an atheist, a practical atheist, and you don't have a whole lot of people around that you really level with and tell them what's going on. Yeah. Well, I really applaud your attitude, Rich. You've got, it sounds like you're doing the best you can with what you've been dealt. So I'm really glad to talk to you tonight and really glad that you're just facing things head on and dealing with reality and not uh, slapping some fairy tale on it. Cause that doesn't help. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That's why I, so I, much, I like to see you when, you, when you're up about, up and about as much yeah. as you can. Well, thanks for tuning okay, in well, and watching you. our show. Thanks for calling in. It's always good to talk to folks who are, dealing with the same stuff we've we've got to continue to encourage one another and i'm really glad that you're here with us in this journey okay thank you have a good one both of you okay okay buddy thank you, you Bye -bye. Too. good guy um wow yeah. it's tough it's tough it's yeah. just no way around it. there's no way to sugarcoat yep. it and you know, just be honest and transparent about it and let people know this is what's happening. And it's not like we're looking for pity. We don't want somebody to feel sorry for us because we fall down. Yeah. It's just that this is, this is the life that we're living in. And it, I think it, I think it helps people to know that, uh, where people struggle, people have hardships and you're not alone. Yeah, it's so acknowledging reality. <laughs> yeah. If you're one of them that's struggling, just know that we are too. Yeah, um, yeah. so I got to remind folks that we have lines open 720-619-2288. And also there are other things going on on the line. As you all know, Sorry. it's the best, it's the best channel on the YouTubes. I like to say, yeah, because it's, best. True. it's true. Um, we've got coming up next week. I mean, uh, tomorrow night, I'm sorry, is. The Hang Up Show with Matt and Jimmy, Matt Del Hunty and Jimmy Snow, the dynamic, dynamic duo. Thursday Whoever night. they are. What? They, We're going to talk about <laughs> politics. Politics. Oh, boy. That's going to be great. Um, the call in, uh, Transatlantic Call In Show uh, is Thursday with Katie, and then Sunday Show with Jimmy Katie and Matt and again. Yeah, it, it'll be oh, Katie okay. and Arden, by the way. Katie and Arden. Yeah. Um, Sunday show with Jimmy and Matt. Monday, Skep Talk, Shannon Q. And then again next Tuesday, me and Jimmy. So come back around and see us then. Um, you know why? You know why we're doing it next Tuesday, right? Uh, you'll tell us, probably. We always, do, uh, we always do streams on the holidays for the people who don't have people to do holidays with. And next, next week's uh, Halloween. Oh, it is? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be, I'm gonna be <laughs> <just> reading. <I> <laughs> what are you, you dressing up as, Dave? Um, Jimmy Snow. <laughs> I'll dress up as you. We could dress up as each other. I don't know yeah. if we have iconic looks, though. We'll just kind of look like ourselves. I'm going to have to gray my hair. <laughs> we'll wing it. We'll wing it. Um, also, I want to remind everybody that there's multiple ways to support the line and this show. You can uh, go to patreon.com slash call the line. Um, as you know, if you watched this recently, I'm continuing to need more help with caregiving and things like uh, all the stuff that comes with, with what I'm dealing with and transitioning uh, to a new place and all the expenses. So if you can throw a few bucks to my Patreon, we appreciate that. That is, uh, on, in the show notes, uh, patreon.com slash dying out loud. Um, I think, is that right, Jimmy? Anyway. Um, also, you can send super chats tonight. As you know, any super chat over $5, five dollars or, or over, we'll read on the, on the, on the uh, show at the end. You can send comments, you can send questions, anything you want, and we will, uh, we will share that at the end of the show tonight. So super chats five bucks or more. And I, I can't read the, do we have calls ready, J Jimmy? I'm just confused with the call in. Yeah. There's been weird stuff happening, but uh, there's calls being screened right now. Uh, and hopefully okay. these ones get figured out, but 
um, yeah, there's something weird happening where yeah, well, they come, the, they're coming and going, and there's a bunch of calls in the queue, and I want to talk to them, but I don't guess they're ready yet. Um, nine percent <laughs> of the people who responded to the poll in the chat, uh, which the poll in the chat was, "Do you believe in an afterlife?" and nine percent of people said yes. I'm just saying you have two of the nicest people who are very unlikely to yell at you to discuss that with. So if you've ever wanted to call in and go, I don't know, I want to talk about this. Uh, I won't even jump Please in call. to yell like I did last night when I when I told someone <laughs> there was a oh, really God, rude Jimmy. caller, a really rude theist. <laughs> and I told him the closest thing to God he had ever met was me as the producer of this show. And then Ooh. I called him a bitch. <laughs> okay. Okay. I promise oh, callers, man. Jimmy won't do that. So Eve, Eve and I will talk to you about the afterlife. I'm, I would love to discuss this with you, you nine percenters who yeah. believe in an afterlife. What, you know, let's talk about that because I'm coming up against it pretty soon. I mean, I'm just being real. I don't, I, I my, my ALS is progressing and I don't think I'm going to be here a lot longer. So um, I'd love to know your thoughts on an afterlife. Important for Dave you. to find out what afterlife I he's going be, to. I may be knocking on that door pretty soon. Maybe people so anyway. should call and say if they think you're going to heaven or hell. Yeah, that should be the poll. <laughs> Is Dave going to heaven or hell? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All the atheists will say hell just to be edgy. Yeah, well. Also because okay. it's true. I'll talk to him about it. I wasn't going to say it, but uh, I know this son of a bitch. You don't uh, know me, Jimmy. Okay, let's talk to Lori Sheher in West Virginia. If I can click talk here. Hey, Lori, you're on the line with Dave and Eve. How are you doing? Uh, good, good. Thank you for taking hey. my call. Yeah, thank you Hi, for Lori. calling. What's on your mind tonight? I'll try to turn you down on the TV. Um, well, um, I guess I'm just in a real space, a real bad space tonight. Um, I'm about a year out of deconstructing from Christianity. I'm 66, so needless to say, I've been brainwashed for probably over 40 years. Uh. Um, I, uh, I found that when I left the church, I don't have no friends. You know, I'm sitting here in West Virginia. I'm all alone. I don't got nobody, and I'm not doing this to feel sorry for me or anything like that. Just okay. You know what do y'all do for for community? I mean, you know, I I miss that. Mm. Yeah. Wow. I um, Eve, talk about that the the deconstruction yeah. space. You, I know you hear from people all the time about this. This is a big yeah. issue. First of all, Lori, I'm so sorry. I um, I can't know your exact feeling, but I remember that just like deep loneliness that I felt when I first left everything. My entire world was church and Christianity. I didn't know anybody outside of that. And I think a big part of the loneliness that I didn't realize until a little bit later was not just that I didn't literally have friends or family and that I was actually alone, but so much of it was like feeling alone and the universe for the first time was a big mm -hmm. heavy weight to bear as well because I had been used to at least, I had felt lonely, loneliness throughout my life, but at least I felt like God was somewhere there sending me goodness. It was like this thing I could rely on. And and so both of those things hitting me at once was really, really heavy. Um, and like I said, that was a big part of what got me to start speaking out online. And I'm not saying like that's the answer to go start blasting your story on the internet because I actually would advise against doing that. Um, <laughs> but I do think I do think that that community online, um, obviously I'm going to be advocating for that because that's part of what I do. But I do think there is something to that. And there's meetups that happen all the time. Um, I mean, I have friends from all kinds of small towns that I've managed to find people. Um, but also, uh, I think just going through the motions of allowing yourself to feel justified in your loneliness is going to be helpful. And you, you will meet those people. You will find community. It sounds like you want to, and that's a value of yours. And so I, it's 2023. Luckily it's a lot easier to do that now. Um, but just it's 
like, I just want to validate that you feel that way. It is a mm -hmm. shitty feeling and it is very normal and it is a grieving process um, to experience that. Because even when you do meet people, you have to like start the process all over again of what it's like to make community and how you get close with people. And it's totally different now that you don't have this forced intimacy of religion as the foundation. So, you know, internet, I think, is really helpful. And also um, accepting that that is part of the journey. Yeah. Yeah, it, um, it's hard. See, I just moved here to West Virginia about three years ago. And I moved mm -hmm. uh, with someone who um, was, uh, I thought, my best friend. And we were going to walk through this together. And now she just informed me recently that she's moving to Florida, which mm -hmm. kind of sucks. But, you know, it's like... Yeah. Yeah. What are you going to do? People people move on, you know. Um, I do yeah. have a couple of acquaintances here in West Virginia. Uh, one's a Christian, one's a Catholic, but we never discuss religion and we have a good time. Mm -hmm. um, but it's different when you're deconstructing than to just to yeah. not talk about religion. Yeah, yeah, it's a different tribe. We've found I've found that to be true. I've been deconstructed about a dozen years, and it took me a long time to find local community because it's just hard but i i was very intentional about it it was very important for me not only to connect online but to find uh, in-person relationships as much as i could and it it takes time and but it's a different kind of relationship than someone who's never been religious or is moderately religious someone who's been where we've been in uh where our whole lives were given to this and then we deconvert from it people if, if people haven't experienced something similar to that they don't really understand it and i don't relate to them as as well as i do someone who's also been through it it's just a different different connection it's not good or bad or wrong or right yeah. it's just different so it's yeah, hard but different. it's yeah it's, it's different yeah and that's what you're expressing. You want, you want some of your people, you want some people that you can hang with that really get it, that get the whole story of where you've come from. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And I there. mean, I'm the kind of person, even though I'm 66 and I have chronic pain and a whole bunch of medical issues, damn, I just like to go out and have fun. You know, I yeah. just really, I like to shoot pool. I like to play darts. I like to, you know, go walking in the, you know, a forest or something. I just, yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah, I get that. And and I, I want to also encourage you, like Eve said, that, that that's to validate all of that. But also, they're out there. They're, they're there. You just don't know they're there. Uh, mm -hmm. A friend of mine just today in a dollar store here near where we are ran into someone and they started chatting and they both identified as atheists just out of the blue and began this just great connection. And they they shared their ideas about, the, you know, she shared the show that we have here. She's going to be watching it, all that stuff. They're out there. This was in a dollar store aisle. And it's not like, you know, you wow. can't. You don't want to wear you don't want to wear a sticker that says I'm an atheist. Are you? Um, you know that out in public, that's going to get you in all kinds of trouble. But I've been able, yeah, especially in especially in the south. <laughs> yeah, I've been able to connect some people just because I've known of like I knew of a of, of a couple in Kentucky in a small town in Kentucky, and then I knew of another person not far from them, and I said, "Oh, you guys should meet." Same thing in Texas, in the same town in East Texas, I connected to some people together because I'm always on the lookout for where people are and and finding someone else in that locale that they can, and that doesn't guarantee they'll hit it off and become friends, but at least there'll yeah. be somebody in the community that they can identify with. So I want, I want to say this, reach out to me, let me know where you are, you know, send me an email, daveoutloud at gmail.com. Let me know where you are, and I'll just keep my eyes open for other people that are close 
that will get it because they're out there. That's what I'm, and there, there are more and more all the time. There are more and more of us coming to this conclusion that all the things we believed all those years were wrong. Yep. Dave, I've been trying to send right. you a hint on the banner. Oh, what happened? I've, Recovering uh, from religion.org. That's an amazing oh, I was resource. Gonna that. Um, I'm a, I'm a, I was going to mention it, Jimmy. Give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Be nice to Jimmy. He works hard. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for saying that. Wow. Lori. Somebody well, didn't you. you. He does not need that, Lori. He does not need that, Lori. <laughs> you have no idea how much I needed that, Lori. <laughs> he does work hard. I love Jimmy, but he needs to go fuck himself tonight, you know. So there's that. <laughs> um yeah, no, I think I'll do religion. that too after I finish off a few more beers. <laughs> Have you heard of recovering from religion? That was, oh, God. That was oh, awful. God. I'm going to hell. No, I'm not. I'm not going to hell and I'm not going to heaven. I'm going to be fertilizer. Damn it. <laughs> yeah. If you're going, we'll all be there. So it'll be a party, Lori. Um, all right. Have you, heard of, have, you, have you heard of recovering from religion, by the way, Lori? Um, I just heard of it when Jimmy had uh, mentioned it to me, so I'm definitely going to go on there and see what they have to uh, what they have to have to uh, help me out here. Yeah, they they do have local meetup groups. They'll they'll connect you in your locale. They're, most of them are online. Some some of them do meet in person, but they've got some great resources to help you connect with community to help you process your changes. So. Yeah, I highly recommend Recovering from Religion. They just do incredible work, and you'll find so many like-minded people there. Yeah. Yeah. I I will definitely, definitely, most definitely check, because I'm in such a small little town. Oh, my gosh. There's like, yeah, yeah. there's like nothing around here except churches. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I'll I'll definitely check that out for sure. I appreciate all the information. And I know a lot of, I mean, you're going to, you're just a year into this, but you're going to find that you're going to connect with like-minded people, similar age and experience. You're going to connect with them online and you'll be, you'll be comfort. They may live all across the country, all across the world. You may never meet in person. You may, but you may never. And you'll still become really, really good friends. And you'll mm -hmm. spend, I know people who FaceTime each every day. They just FaceTime each other every day. It's like they are having coffee together, you know, and just talk about the day, what's going on. And they've become really, really close. And it's, yeah. it's so with like, like Eve said, this is 2023. The resources available for all of that are so vast where you can, you can just be basically in each other's presence, even though you're, across the country in different time zones or whatever, you're still connecting in a way that's meaningful. Yeah, there, there's and that's somebody out there I that need feels connection. exactly. I need, yeah, go ahead, yeah. sorry. There's, there's somebody, oh, you're good. There's somebody out there that feels exactly how you do that is Absolutely. also searching for that community. And so just don't give up. And um, I, I, like Dave said, there's there's resources and um, and and it's so fun when you do make those connections because you'll find that both parties really uh they don't want to take it for granted because we understand mm -hmm. how rare that is and um and so you know my my heart goes out to you but i'm also excited for you to find your community i, I think you will and please reach out i mean that with um, all my heart yeah. i love connecting people and eve mentioned it early i'll just say it we in the last few years i've put together a gathering of people in the Gulf Coast for just this thing, for for people to come together. Everyone, I mean, it's a vast number of people. And we, if you're interested in that, again, email me and we'll see if we can work you in and fit you in. I'll give you the details. But uh, I'm just that, it's that important to me to facilitate people finding each other in this community because I think it's that important. And so we've just created this space where people come together for a week, two weeks, a half a week, whatever, and just spend time together to get to know each other. And I've seen it over and over again over the last few years, people who never knew each other, they come together, they meet there at the beach house, and they go away becoming best friends and stay in touch and call each other all the time. 
because it is a very unique community that we that we share in this deconstructing space. It's it's unlike any other, and we need people that get us. That's it. Bottom line. So yeah, exactly. That's what we do. Exactly. Now, is your email address in in? Um, do you have it linked in here or? It should be in the chat. Somebody okay. stick it in there. Dave out loud at gmail.com. Um, you can also find me at daveoutloud.org and it's got all my contact info there. I'm not, I'm not hard to find. Just Google Dave Warnock dying out loud. You'll have hours of listening and viewing pleasure. If you so inclined for that sort of thing, <laughs> I'm, I'm quite public. <laughs> you sound like an old radio station. Yeah. I know. <laughs> okay. That's, you got the old part right. Well, Lori, I'm well, so well, glad you hey, called. Um, I'm, I, I'm so I glad you so called. I'm so glad Thank you, you took for... my call, and I will not take up any more of your time. And well, uh, no, I don't believe in for... heaven or hell, so that takes care of the question. Well, Amazing. Take, Thanks so much, Lori. Pat yourself on the back. It takes a little, a little bit of courage to, to call in and be vulnerable like that. So thank you for doing that, Lori. Good for you. Okay, and I'm sending good energy your way, Dave. Appreciate you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Oh, that's so good to connect folks like that. I just, yeah, that's, that's what we're here for. Let's yep, that's talk important. to, let's talk to Sergio. He, him in Texas. You're on the line with Dave and Eve. What's on your mind, Sergio? Hi, Dave. Hi, Eve. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yeah, we can hear you. Hi. Hi, uh. I'm sorry about it. I sound nervous. I always sound nervous. Uh, this is my third call into the show, but uh, I, I am a Christian. I do I do believe in the afterlife, uh, uh, as expressed in the, the scriptures. And I listened to. I, I was able to make the start of the show, and I, I guess my thoughts are. And I, I got a question, I guess, for both of you. But uh, Eve, if, if I may start with you, I. I listened to you say uh, about your past, a little brief past. Um, you said that you you were you believe in it and that God uh, you, you couldn't believe in a God that was going to send you to hell because you were trying to figure things out. Uh, no. Is, so is what I maybe said? I worded it poorly. I, I was saying if there was a God that would knowing my heart fully and knowing that I was truly searching for, for truth, if that God would send me to hell, um, then that God is not all loving or not all knowing or not all powerful. And that's not a God I would worship. So that's not a God I would be interested in anyways. Um, and I, there's bigger problems in the world if that God exists. So that's kind of what gave me permission to start questioning beyond that. It's not that I didn't believe a God could exist that would create a hell or send me to hell. It's just that that God um, is not one that I would follow. Okay. So I, I may have heard you wrong. I guess I, I thought you were saying that um, you could not believe in a God that would send you to hell uh, be, just because you were trying to figure out if there was a heaven or hell, you know, asking questions like that. And uh, I couldn't believe, yeah, I, I couldn't believe that that God is all loving. Okay. And I guess my thoughts, you know, I'm not, I guess when I say this, I'm not trying to argue for the truth of the Bible, but I I would start a place where I would say that if that's what you're believing, then that, like that, that's not what uh, is taught. Like that's not a reason in the scriptures that where, where people that send people to hell uh, because they're questioning or, or trying to figure things out. I believe that what's in when people we read hell? the scriptures, you know we what? can argue. We can argue. We can argue. Well, that's what I'm trying to get to. Is that okay? That he wouldn't send people for trying to figure out if there's truth or not. Um, the reason that I believe the scriptures teach is that because of uh, sin, that we've transgressed or broken God's moral commands, His law, and that that's the reason. Now. That's the whole reason that Can I Christians ask you a question? The, the gospel church. Sure, sure. Yeah. Can I, I think I can fast track this conversation if I can ask you this question. 
So I, I don't believe that a God exists at all. Um, I don't believe that, that sin is a thing. Um, I think that's a religious construct. I don't believe that there is a heaven or a hell. When I die, what do you think is going to happen to me? I don't know when you're going to die. And I mean, I, I if I died what right now, if I died, if I, if I died not believing in any God, what do you think would happen to me? You would, uh, if this, if I'm reading the scriptures right, you would be judged by God according to his uh, law. Um, and pretty much to the Ten Commandments, you know, the moral law, you know, what you would say, um, transgression of his law or breaking of his law. So the same way as um, you'd be guilty of breaking his commands, is what I'm saying. Like, uh, kind of like so I would go in, our, in, the, in, the, in the world, you would uh, be judged by a judge if you present, you know, if you break a certain law, let's say it's a uh, Beating fine or a, a certain crime, then that's what you would be judged for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I so I understand the process that you think God takes to make that decision. But what decision do you think, based on the fact that I don't believe that any of that exists, does that mean automatically I'm I'm going to to hell? And I assume we're talking about the Christian God here, since you're saying scripture. Right, yeah, and he's mentioned AG, so like, I, I was in, that's where I was, uh, Christians use the term born again, that's where I came Right, age. yes. Uh, uh, so, I, I wouldn't, I'd walk you to God's commands, and then I'd, I'd say a word to you, according to this, but, believe God would sin. Right, but that, Not where the Jesus you have to know that sounds, that sounds as ridiculous to me as if I told you, let's, we, we need to look at Harry Potter's commandments. It, it, I don't believe no. in it. So it's already ridiculous. So I don't hold the belief. And so based on what you're saying, your God would send me to hell simply for not believing. Because that's, that's the issue that we're coming up against here. We're, we can't even get to the Ten Commandments because I don't even believe mm -hmm. but, uh, that this God exists, nonetheless issued those Ten Commandments. And so that is a God that, that would send someone to hell for not believing that it exists, for not believing at all. It doesn't matter how I've lived my life. It doesn't matter um, if I've helped other people. It doesn't matter if I've lived a better life than a serial killer. If I don't believe, then that's enough for your God to condemn me to an eternity of hell. And I don't understand why somebody wants to believe in that God. But that's my that's my pushback. Is it, when you said that you would send you for simply not believing, but that's my pushback is that Christianity doesn't teach that. It teaches that it doesn't have to die. teach no, it. It, it doesn't have to Where, teach yeah. it because point blank, that's that's what well, your beliefs equal. If you believe that it, you have to follow the think? Ten Commandments, no, I, I, I think you're skipping a whole part of all of this, which is the belief part has to happen in order for the following of your commandments to happen. So if I already don't even believe, then I can't fulfill the, the thing that your God is requiring requiring in order for me to go to heaven it is actually belief that sends disbelief that sends you to hell yeah that's sergio, the first step it, it's not it's not sergio let me jump in i used to be a pastor sure. i know the scripture very well and it's not breaking the ten commandments that sends you to hell it's not believing in the sacrifice of the death and resurrection of jesus christ he that believeth is blessed he that is not he that does not believe is condemned that is the scripture so it doesn't matter what, what kind of life you've lived. Pardon? Uh, Sorry? Uh, what scripture is that? He's in John. Uh, I'm you. loosely uh, paraphrasing John. Okay. I mean, there's so many so, scriptures. I mean, what? the book of Romans. No, listen. Let me listen. I, I, I haven't talked much. Okay. okay but sure. okay. It, it's, it, it's not the breaking of the Ten Commandments. Uh, it's not me uh, having other gods before me. It's not me stealing but it's it's not believing in Jesus. It's not accepting the sacrifice of his death and resurrection. That is what sends people to hell according to orthodox Christian belief. Well, and can so, I ask you a yes or no question, point, Sergio? It doesn't matter how you live. It doesn't matter the good or the bad that you do. It's whether you believe or not. 
Yeah, Sergio, can I just ask you one yes or no question? Can, okay, I'll, I'll can do a I, yes or no. <laughs> okay, can I go to heaven if I don't believe that Jesus was the Son of God and died for my sins? Can you can you uh, say that again, please? Can I can, go to heaven go to, if I don't believe in Jesus and, and the God of the Bible? I don't believe that Jesus existed and died for my sins. No, no. That's according okay. to So the, I'm the going to hell. So I'm going to hell <laughs> because I don't believe. That's what we're getting at here. And that's what you've now but, but admitted see, to. But see, but see that you're missing the, the you're missing the, the reason that, and Dave, Dave mentioned it. It's because there's one that he talked about Jesus being the sacrifice. He was the one that was perfect and paid for those sins. Oh, you're, is, right. We're breaking them down. Right. You're man. trying to, you're trying to so justify. When I, when you're the, trying when to. I, when I, no, no. When I go, when I go talk to someone like you wanted me to answer it, will be, will you go, where will you go when you go to, well, it wouldn't make sense for me to just tell you without explaining uh, so that you can understand the reason for it. We know the reasons. Like, we, we're the, we're the clear reasons on the reasons. The yeah, I, I preached, to show I preached the reasons. Sergio, Sergio we've, okay, we've lived the, the reasons. We, we know the reasons. We're saying the reasons are horrible. That's what we're saying. And let's you define know, hell. The, 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 the ends don't justify about, the means. Sergio, we're talking okay, but about... but do you know the reasons? Sergio, question, it doesn't David. matter. It doesn't matter. We're talking about also, I well, want to define hell in, in your opinion, hell. Hell is a place of eternal conscious torment, correct? Weeping and gnashing of teeth where the worm doesn't, doesn't die. That's the hell we're talking about, right? Yes, sir. that's, uh, that's, um, okay. So let me ask you this, Sergio. Torment? Yes, yes. Right. In, eternal yes. conscious torment where you don't die, you burn forever in agonizing pain correct okay yes correct. yes i mean the, you okay. you were a pastor right oh. you, you point the scriptures <laughs> I know, that, I know that teach about hell right so let me ask you this we're, in our justice system if if i was pulled over for going 70 in a 65 and i was given a ticket would would they be justified? I mean, would it make sense to you for them to take me and lock me up for thirty years, for instance, for that speeding ticket? Thirty years or ten years even? Would that seem justified no, to you? Justified for would, a speeding ticket? Yeah, would that seem a bit excessive, maybe? Yes, I think so. Yeah. Okay. When I look at the, the speed think, traffic you, laws, they'll give you a, do you a think fine. That, do you think it's possible that someone like Eve, my sweet young friend here, who is a wonderful, kind-hearted person who loves and is generous and kind, but just doesn't believe in Jesus because she doesn't see enough evidence to support the claim, do you think it's justified that she would spend eternity burning her flesh burning she's screaming in agony because of that not because she was a serial killer not because she was adolf hitler and gassed millions of jews but because she just didn't see after asking some questions that jesus warranted her belief you think it's justified that it's warranted for that kind of punishment because it seems a bit excessive to me well here's here's do, that's a yes like or no said, response. Do you uh, think that's warranted? That she, no, but do you think that's warranted? Yes or no. Yes or no. Yes or no. Do you personally no, think it's you, warranted? You described, no, because you, you've told me that she's uh, she's loving. And, uh, but I don't other, believe other in Jesus. And you already said that I, I don't believe in Jesus. And you already said that you don't think it's possible to go to heaven without believing in that Jesus. So which is it? Okay, what? Well, that's why I'm trying to explain, Dave. What was the purpose of the the law, the commandments? What was the function which of the law? Which which the commandments? commandments? Which law? The, okay, that that should not lie. Let's go with one of them. Okay, what's the purpose of that? 
It's for well, God to control that, people. That, Paul, it's it's well, for see, control. I would push back and say that's not. I would say that that's not what Christianity teaches. You could say that it's for control, but let's at least get what the the Bible teaches right. The function of the law, Paul said, was the. Can I was to reveal our sin? Was to reveal our sin. Right. Yes. Now. So you're now telling me. You're telling you're me that God loving. So if you've loved, then He would not send you to hell. Okay. If you had been loving and perfect and friendly and kind and all those things all your life, then you, you it would not be justified for God to send you to hell. That's one of the reasons but Jesus she said doesn't what if, the righteous. What if, the righteous Sergio, she doesn't righteous believe not, in Jesus. Sergio, I know, I know she, she doesn't, doesn't believe. believe. I, I accept. I accept, and I'm and missing that she does not believe. You've but told her she's going to hell. But the proclamation it's, of the gospel is telling you what Jesus did for you despite you breaking God's commands. Now, if she doesn't, it doesn't matter. That happened. It's not. It doesn't matter What's what that? the gospel says. Yes, it we does. don't believe. No, it, it doesn't matter to me. It matters. Says. It matters no, just no, as much as any book. other fiction. Do you care it what Harry, Harry Potter to... says? Do you care what Harry Potter says? Who wrote Harry Potter? Does it matter? Do you care what the Quran says? It does matter who wrote the Harry Potter. You're asking me a question. Who wrote Harry Potter? J.K. Rowling, a woman in England. Okay. Now. You're digging I yourself a hole great, here. Be careful. I think, I think great. there's great evidence that supports that the scriptures were written over thousands of years by different people. And the, they all were proclaiming and pointing towards the Messiah who would come and die for sins. Now, you, I know Can that I, you don't you believe, believe that. that. But, you believe but that we don't. The show, you said, I, I know, but that's my point. The, it's the point is that she said that in the begin in the beginning of the show that referencing a God that would send her to hell for simply questioning. And my pushback was, no, that's not what Scripture teaches. That's all my pushback I, is for. Not whether can she's I believing or not. Your... Can we yeah, at but least Sergio, agree this is... that the scriptures teach that we are not saved by being good or doing good works? It's through Jesus alone. That's we know that. That's what's fucked say, up about I'm... him. It's fucked okay. up. We it's know fucked what the up that you're God, you... and we don't care. So, that's exactly so you, what we're saying. You, you get, you go to hell. For... Let let Eve talk. I, no, first Sergio. of all, Hang on. first of all, the gospel okay, does not sure, have a consistent sure. message. It doesn't have a consistent message. I would say it we have to focus on on. That's it. fine. All we can go off of right now is what you're saying you believe it says, because I, there I isn't a consistent want, message to it. So I am I hear what you're saying. And if we're going with the idea that that's what the scripture says, you're still you're still saying that I would go to hell for not believing. You're I don't know. I don't know how you're missing that you're saying this, but you've acknowledged this over and over again throughout other things you're saying. This is what I think is happening. I think that you are kinder. Wait, wait, you sound like wait, a, let me, let you me. sound like a very nice. I'm not done. You sound like a really nice okay, person, sure. and I'm I'm enjoying talking to you, and I think this is a great conversation. And I think that you are more Thank kind, you, and I think you're more intelligent than the scriptures that you're trying to justify. That's what it mm -hmm. sounds like to me. It sounds like back when I was trying to justify these things, and I was, you know, um, this, that, you know, trying to make sense and trying to line a, a teaching that is not kind, that is not justified, up with mm -hmm. my own empathy and my own... Um, intellectual honesty and i think that's what's happening right here i don't think you are that better you than are your theology to... yes You're better than your Fully. theology are you saying i'm better than my theology absolutely 100 yes. percent. you're oh. a better person oh, okay. than your bible wants you to be your bible is making you be unkinder and less compassionate unkinder. than you naturally would be I'm encouraging you to let go of that stuff, bro. Let it go. Oh, man. Be a human. That's, be a human and love hey, people. Dave, be a human and love saying, people. Then, that is what? not fair what you're saying because why? First of all, like he's if paying we you a compliment. When he went, no, he, he's what's saying not that, fair. Well, what's, because what's a lot was said, and I had no chance. Okay, okay, I'm trying to respond. A lot was said here. Okay. 
the first thing that I can remember is that Eve said that the, the Bible was inconsistent. Okay, fine, I can hear and listen to that, but I want to know Let, let's, why. Let's don't you get can't into just that. keep talking can, and say that it's inconsistent. Sergio, and then we're not Dave, gonna, Dave, you we said can, that I... Sergio, okay, okay. Sergio, stop. Sure, sure, sure. We could bounce scriptures back and forth the rest of the night. I don't have time for that. I got to pee in a little bit. We can't do that. You think the Bible is consistent. No, we don't. No, listen, listen, listen. I want you to tell me what was it that wasn't fair when I said that you're better than theology. Let it go. Be a human and love people. What's not fair about that? Be a human and love people and that I'm better than the scriptures? You're better than the no, theology, that, the scriptures? Of... Go ahead. Okay. Okay, so one of the things Jesus said was that the righteous people that are good, perfect, uh, do not need, uh, like he compared it to physicians, that well people don't need a physician, it's the sick people. And that's who he came right. for, right? Okay, I I'm saying that I'm one of them. I was one of them, and you I'm guys saying agree you're not. that that that's a teacher. That the scriptures I'm saying there's saying nothing that, uh, okay. there's nothing wrong with you, Sergio. You're not broken. You're not a sinner. You're just a human. But you don't Do even the best know. You can. Yeah, but I don't care. This is this I don't is have why. to know you. Sin is not a thing. No, but you what standard do you You've use to, to say those things? You've been sold a disease that doesn't exist so that you can be sold a cure that's not needed. That's all. And you might very well be a shit person and we don't know it. I don't know. You seem pretty nice and you seem you decent. Nice. You seem to have a good heart. But it doesn't matter. Either way, that's because of your own choices. If you're if you're being decent, it's because you're choosing to be decent. And if you're making shit decisions that are impacting other people poorly, it's because you're choosing to do that. Mm -hmm. It's not because of you know some supernatural experience so, that's happened. Okay. So you said I was... If I was choosing those good things, I would be a decent person. Yeah. If you're making choices that are impacting people around you positively or at least neutrally, then I think that makes you a decent person. If you're making choices that negatively impact those around you, then I think that makes you more of a shit person, depending this on where you go on the spectrum. This isn't complicated. Okay. It's not about sin or being redeemed no, no, or some special thing happening to you. And maybe you needed to believe in a story in order to motivate you. and. I used to be one oh, of those my, people too. I don't need that story to motivate me anymore. I make good choices or do my best to make good choices. And I do my best to, to treat other people well, because I think that it is the best way to, um, to live my life. And I think and that I it is the best. That, when I make a choice that hurts people or isn't a good choice, I just acknowledge it and say, man, that wasn't the best thing for me to do. I'm sorry that I did that and that it hurt you. I don't need to repent of something. I don't need some savior to save me. I'm just a human getting up every day, doing the best I can. And I suspect that you are too, Sergio. So I'm gonna, we're gonna need to wrap it up because we've danced around a lot, but I'm gonna say yeah. again, I, what Eve said, I think you, you sound like a very good person. And that I, I'm gonna say again, I think you're caught up in a message, a theology that is incorrect and isn't helpful and doesn't really reflect the way that life works. And I know that you don't agree with that, but I would encourage you to continue to ask questions, be curious, and maybe one day you'll come to the same conclusion that even I came to, that it doesn't make sense, and that the world works just as if there were no God. And there's no hell needed, there's no heaven needed. Just live life the best you can. Okay? But thanks, thanks for, for calling, calling Sergio. Brother. Call again guys. someday. I, I hope I can call again for some other day. Uh, please, please, any please. day. Yeah, you're welcome to call I, I, anytime. We, we'd love talking to you again. Oh, uh, I know. Okay. <laughs> Have a great evening. Thank you, Sergio. Thanks, Sergio. Uh, Have a good evening. Uh, it breaks my heart when we have <sighs> people on who are better than their theology, and you can just hear I it know. through the phone. I know. You can hear it through the phone. I know. He's struggling so hard to make that message make sense. 
after the show, yep. you should go watch uh, my conversation with Sergio for Sunday. <laughs> uh, no. For the record, I didn't yell. I didn't rage quit on him. I did Amazing. some people on that episode, but not not that one. Uh, okay. And um, uh, but Sergio has, and I'm trying to say this in a way that isn't just like being kind of shitty. Sergio has a very surface level understanding of things. To the yeah. point oh, yeah. that That's he show uh, on Sunday he was calling in to defend that things like the Bible are peer reviewed because he believed the word peer review means when a second person has a thought about something. Not oh, he does, and, and so then opinion. he tried to come when when what peer review is was explained to him. He then still tried to invoke that like multiple mm. people. Confirming biblical experiences is uh, peer review. Yeah, no. it's, uh, not, not the same. I, I was that person. I was that person, yeah. and it makes me really sad because I don't think that makes you stupid. It makes you uneducated, um, and that's a lot of times not in that person's hands. It wasn't in my hands, yeah. and and that's right. it's sad because it's sad and potentially great because it means there's there's so much ahead of him that he could easily right. discover with just a little bit of it's what happened to me. You know, That's he's just question. a few books yep. away from, yeah, <laughs> and, and a few YouTube so if, shows if somebody's away. Listening, right? <laughs> if somebody's listening to this and you're like, I don't know what peer review is, or you're, you know, maybe on the same level as Sergio's more surface understanding, um, do better. Like, do what I did. Yeah. No, if you if you That's really impressive. believe in this stuff, then become an expert at it. Like, you're betting your whole entire life on it already. You might as well go ahead and really <laughs> really we own it and Lori really learn earlier who who after 66 years Lori came to these same conclusions it's 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 never too late to change your mind about something that yeah. you came to realize didn't make sense so yeah. just don't hang on to something that doesn't make sense just because you always have how yeah. could you search and if you are more um, if you're more kind than the god that you believe in if you're more kind than the theology that you're defending you should look at that. <laughs> yeah, think about that. Um, I, I also we'll one I, more it was so hard to not jump in because I wanted to point out there are multiple verses. The Bible is not. Uh, no, I didn't, I didn't want to get down. about what happens to infidels and non-believers. Yeah, no. I didn't want to get into Bible studies. Um, reminding everyone, we got one more call, and then we'll do super chats, five dollars or more. We will read your super chat on the line on the show. Uh, any questions or comments, we will handle it. Let's talk to Will, he, him in Washington. Hey, Will, you're on the line with Dave and E. What's on your mind? Hey, Dave. Hey, Eve. How are you guys doing? Good. How are you? Good. Thanks for hanging on there for a while. I knew you were online for a, on hold for a while, but we're glad to get to you. Yeah. Um, well, I'll, I'll just get straight to it, I guess. Um, so basically, uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a lifelong atheist, um, and uh, about what was it, three months ago, um, I had a little, I got really low, and um, I, you know, I, I don't know what the YouTube algorithm says about self-harm talk, but it was kind of yeah. a, an unaliving episode. Yeah. Um, um, and you know, it's like, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, um, well, basically, you know, I, like, I feel kind of lame cause like, you know, I'm, you know, everything else is more or less fine in my life, but like, you know, I just have a hard time with the daily kind of will to move forward. And I, I, I don't know. Like, I feel like people in the atheist community talk about like, Oh, you know, I'm an atheist and I have no problem finding a will to live. And I'm like, mm. how? Mm. You know? Mm. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I do want to preface all this by saying, like, I'm in therapy. I'm on meds. Like, I, I am doing the, you know, the, the work. Like, I'm not trying to, like, use yeah, you guys as, like, you. mental health experts or anything like that. So, I, sure. you know, that's for anyone else out there. But, but that's more or less the the what I came with. Yeah, I, I get that. I mean, all of us are on the spectrum, if you will, when it comes to life and enjoying life and whether 
you're motivated and, and it can vary from day to day. I, you know, I'm struggling, as you know, with a terminal illness. And there are days when I go, I don't know if I want to keep fighting this fight. Why am, why am I, everything's getting so hard. Why am I, mm. why, what am I doing? Um, yeah. But I just, I, I do have those days, but they're not often. And I do find value in the work that I do here and elsewhere. And I think that motivates me to, to keep plugging along, if you will, even though it gets harder. Um, I think we all have to find something like that in some ways, even if it's just in our local community or with friends that we know care about us. And we know that they yeah. would be sad if we weren't there or we, their life would be less full if we weren't there or whatever. I mean, it's, it's not an easy thing. This, this life's right. not easy for everybody. Yeah. I, th I think, well, first of all, well, I'm so sorry that you have been battling that and um, I'm really proud of you for doing, doing the work as you called it. And um, I think that already says a lot about you and um, the trajectory of, of what's next for you. And I think I tend to have pretty nihilistic views of the world and um the way that works for me is that i also am a really goofy person kind of like nothing matters so everything matters and i think bringing playfulness and joy i mean there's studies on this um that is so such an important thing because you're right like being an atheist it's kind of acknowledging some really tough realities of life mm -hmm. so it's being honest and some of those can feel really heavy and that's why i understand people that that do uh, rely on religion as a coping mechanism because it sounds nice um, to have yeah. answers to things that we that we don't or that we don't like the answers yeah. to. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that the the best way to combat that that nihilistic tendency is to just bring joy and playfulness and find that part of you um, and find people that bring that part of you out. Um, this it's like it's like when nothing matters it it gives you permission to to bring a, a playfulness to stuff and um there's a lot of people with really good content i wish i could think of some of them right now but i'm sure if you just even search that of like playful playfulness um and joy and nihilism you know those people that 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 find the balance between those two things i think that might be helpful to you it's been really helpful to me um and uh, i'm just i'm proud of you for for being here and calling us yeah and for speaking up about it. Oh. Yeah, thank you for yeah. vocalizing things that a lot of people think. Yes. Yeah, it, it. I think it's really easy to feel alone, uh, you know, particularly these days. And, you know, you, like, like, like you were saying, Eve, like, um, you know, having a religion is really tempting in that way because yeah. it's just, you know, that built-in thing i haven't i haven't heard of i mean i i do vibe with that nihilistic kind of you know sort of if nothing matters everything matters kind of kind of energy um so i that that actually does seem like a great place to start and like i part of the thing is like i have a young kid and uh, mm -hmm. i just separate or it just uh, got divorced from his mom and his mom so has gone into like religion i mean mm -hmm. All in all, it's for the best, you know, obviously. Yeah. Um, but like, you know, I'm in the divorce mom, club and I like, love it. So, <laughs> hey, congrats, rock on. <laughs> Thank um, you. but like, you know, and like his mom is in like a like a rainbow flag, like liberal church. So it's like, mm -hmm. I don't love it, but if he was gonna go to a church, sure, you know. I guess that's the one I'd want him to go to ish, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah. That's, that's a good, that's a good way to put it. I mean, find the allies where you can find them in this life is what I look, what I, Absolutely. what I talk about. Yeah. If, if there's a, if, if he's, you're right, if he's going to go somewhere, that's the place to go because at the very least he'll, if he stays in it, you know, there's community there and there's people that can be like-minded in, in some ways that really matter more than what you believe in and don't right. believe in it's who you support and the kind of pe the kind of things you advocate for. 
Right. And they I they, they're probably not the kind of people who are gonna like, you know, shun him if he says something blasphemous yeah. and what have you. So, you know, like right. I'm Yeah. And, you know, I, I I feel good about that, but it's like I don't want to make my will to live his problem because I also feel like no. that's like super unfair, you know? You're right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and like so like I, you know, that's the struggle that like I think I've got going on now. And I don't know. I mean, I, I feel like such a doofus talking to, you know, Dave of all people, you know, about this because like. Oh. No, yeah, I'm He's middle the perfect aged person, and mostly fine. No, don't don't ever say that because I'll be the first to tell you that we all have our own issues, and I'm not ever going to say that my issue is bigger than anyone else's because it's ALS. We all have our own stuff that we're dealing with. We have our demons. We have our struggles, and yeah. no one is less legitimate than the other. So don't ever think that I would think that, and you're perfectly fine to voice your your struggles with, with, uh, these kind of issues. So I, again, I applaud you for vocalizing it. A lot of people are thinking it and they don't come yeah. out and say it. So you're speaking for a lot of, I, mean, I know because I hear from them <laughs> a lot. And, and, uh, so you're speaking for a lot of people and it helps because then people know that they're not alone. And then people know, well, mm -hmm. if you know, Will's hanging in there, Will's doing it, I can do it. And it, we just yeah. strengthen each other. We do. We strengthen each other. So good for you, buddy. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's okay, this is man. like basically the first conversation I've had with anybody who's not like my therapist about this, like in any kind of depth. <laughs> but, uh, mm. well, yeah. Well, I'm glad so you called. I, I mean, I know you guys are. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You got it. Oh, I just, I, I know you guys are like closing out, so I, I won't like take a ton more of your time, but um, it's really, really great to talk to you guys. And I'm a huge fan of both of you. Um, you just, thank you. You're excellent We're, people. Thanks and for calling. I'm, well. I'm in the chat. So um, I'm monkey and type, I'm monkey at typewriter in chat. So oh, okay. you guys so nice. yeah. <laughs> Thanks, monkey. Well, I'm glad you <laughs> Thanks called. Thanks so much for calling. Uh, it's really, yeah. It's really important. Like I said, it's really important that we, we say these things out loud. So yes. keep, keep doing the work you're doing. Keep, keep pressing forward. Call anytime. Keep in the chat. Reach out yeah. anytime. We're here for each other. Yeah. Okay, buddy. Keep talking yeah. about it too. Well, thank it's, you guys so awesome. much. And Thank you. Thank you both. And uh, yeah, you guys have a great night. And um, I, I, I do have one last question. What, what are you drinking, Eve? <laughs> what am I what? Eve, what, oh, what am I drinking? Yeah, I, I don't know. What, am I allowed to? Should I be like, oh, this is colored water? This is it's colored some water. watered down it's bourbon, actually. It is nice. very watered oh God, down bourbon at this that? point. You can't see that on the channel. <laughs> Damn no. it, Jimmy's never gonna let me back on here again. My uh, like, pastor's well, daughter self is. <laughs> I mean, oh, if you sin on camera, then it's just out there for the world to see. It's kind of, it's, it's kind of happening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for calling. Well, uh, thank all you. Right. Well, thank you, thank guys you for so calling. Much. Well. Yeah, you guys take care. I tried to head that off. That's okay. Hopefully it's not going to kill us. Oh, well. Before we do Super Chats, we got to do one thing. Uh, okay. Our most hardworking mod, uh, unless I am mistaken, I believe it is Jen's birthday. I got cookies in chat. Aww, and so happy why birthday. don't we awkwardly and out of sync sing happy birthday? Oh happy God! Happy birthday! Hey. Worship leader, go, go, <laughs> Eve. Worship leader. Wait, no. Why are we singing in this key? Birthday to I'm just you. Terrible. It, it'd be this out of sync at all. Happy, happy birthday, birthday, Jen! I got cookies, and also Dylan earlier in the week, but happy even more birthday. Jen because it's actually her birthday today. Happy birthday to you! <laughs> <laughs> happy birthday, Jen! <laughs> I think we want at least we one love phrase. You. Can you can you sing no. one phrase, Eve? Uh, nope, not nope. happening. You won't do it. Won't do it. Uh, for I, everyone, I got that. Okay, that is not happening. I got, I got cookies. That. Is the hardest working mod in the chats by you know she's always working. Aww. 
Okay, Jimmy, let's do some super chats and do not be loud. I got to, I, I can't stay long. So let's just, so Jimmy, zip it. You can step take, away take, to pee. We can, we can hold the fort down. I'll if take you need the to first pee. one from our buddy, Greg Markowski, 1999. I love all your co-hosts slash guests, but honestly, Eve is Aww. my favorite. She is so Thank smart you. and wonderful. Thanks for the show, Dave and Eve. Thank you, Greg. Thanks so much, He's Greg. Wrong. He's not wrong. So sweet. Um, from Helen Lawson, Dave reminds us to live this life, not treat it like a doormat for some make-believe afterlife. I think that is very true, and I love that. Thank you, Helen. P appreciate your support and your comment. Yeah. Oh, Again from Greg, four ninety nine. By the way, I cheated and hit the like button on two different devices. Uh oh, it's gonna skew the algorithm. Now you're going to hell. We're double liked. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. Hey, everybody who's watching right now, about half of you aren't subscribed, and we're a hundred and fifty subscribers away from a hundred thousand. Oh, so, guys, do it! Do it, please. Yes. Subscribe, like, all those things. Uh, that's a big. That's a big milestone, Jimmy. Oh yeah. Plus, you get better. Like YouTube just treats you better once you get because you can get verified and shit, and they yeah they assign a person to you. It's nice. Is this me or you, Eve? Um, I think it's me. Go ahead. Um, okay, PhD it. Tony. The best anyone can do is lead life as well as you're able. Treat those around you with respect and compassion. This channel helps people achieve that. Oh. Thanks, Tony. That's awesome. I think you're right. Thank you so much, Tony. We can keep reminding folks of that. It's that simple. Just do the best you can. Yeah. Be kind. Yeah. Love people. Five dollars. Hey, Robin from Robin Webster. With all going on in the world, I feel the work being done by Dave, Eve, the line, and other activists is even more important now than ever. Thank you, Robin. I think you might be right. Yeah, I thanks. appreciate you saying that. Will Judy. Uh, Hi, Will. Will. Uh, we love Will. Keep up the wonderful work, you two. Big hugs from Texas. Big hugs back. Love you, Will. Will's one of the good ones. What a great guy. He is. $5 Australian from PhD Tony. Is there a customer satisfaction form we can use to provide God some feedback on the effectiveness and value of thoughts and prayers? <laughs> I that'd be that'd be nice. I don't I doubt there is. Yeah. I don't think God wants yeah. our feedback. You have There's to send it in thoughts and prayers. Me. So <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. You have to pray about it. Right. Um, from Bren Poo Casey. I hope that I'm saying that right. It's not a real holiday unless you get the day off from work. This must be in regards to Halloween. Which Oh. Yeah, I yeah, guess people probably probably. just do stuff on the weekend. Yeah, it's not a real holiday. Halloween's actually on the 31st, whether it's a Tuesday or whatever, right? I know. And now I hear that neighborhoods are strategically planning, which I think is smart, to do trick-or-treating like on the weekend so that kids don't have a yeah. school night. Because I remember I'd be like, oh, this is a school night, so like we got to get out and do this. Yeah. And... Six ninety nine Can alleged Canadian dollars from the Stacy's Mom <laughs> podcast. What a great show, guys! Go watch the Stacy's Mom podcast on Mondays. Great show with Dave and Eve, and a very happy birthday shout out to I Got Cookies. Yay! Yeah, thank you, guys. Hey again, and you're welcome for not singing. Sorry, you had to listen to Jimmy and Dave. <laughs> How dare you? I have the voice of an angel. <laughs> You got that voice of a demon. <laughs> <laughs> um, monkey at typewriter. Oh, that was Will. Is that correct? Well, that's yeah. Will. Uh, uh -huh. I'm, I'm so happy for both of your time and energy. I usually make a stupid joke, but I'm just so full of gratitude. It's overpowered my sarcasm. Thank you so much for everything you do. Oh, and is that, wait, the CTFD, remind me what that stands for. Carpe the fucking diem. 
Oh, that's right. That's right. I'm thinking this. I'm yeah. still thinking like it's thinking something of, about telling Jimmy to go, go fuck himself. himself Jimmy, yeah. 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 Thanks, Mikey. Yeah. Good to talk to you tonight, Will. Yeah. Thank you so much for calling. Hey, the go fuck yourself, Jimmy, is G F Y. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, whatever. I can't think of her now. All of a sudden. <laughs> yeah, my brain. Yeah, we'll finish our drinks. <laughs> my brain's fried. But. Uh, uh, Thank you, everyone who called in, those of you in the chat, yeah. the moderators, the call screeners, everybody who works so hard, even Jimmy, our famous producer, <laughs> who's wonderful. Get us. He's actually folks, the best. Subscribe. Subscribe to the line if you have it. He's a real loser. We're, everyone says we're really, it. Everyone says it. We're really close to the 100K mark, and that's a big milestone. So I want to say congrats to Jimmy for that because we're going to hit it. And that's just huge. So I'm I'm honored to be a part of the great lineup of the line. I really am. And thank you, Jimmy, for what you've done to put this all together. And Eve, as always, um, so fun to have you. Where tell us what you're doing, where where to find you, what's going on. I know, you know, all the stuff, but tell us. Yeah. Thank you guys, first of all, for having me on here. I always love Hanging out with Dave and Jimmy and all of you. Um, so I'm Eve underscore was framed on all platforms. Um, I have new stuff coming out next week. So there's going to be some announcements. There's going to be some merch that everybody's been asking for <laughs> that I've been really slow oh, to do. Girl, there's going to be Patreon extra, you know, like blogs and videos and stuff. Um, Lots of, and then just regular content, finally getting back to doing that and podcasts coming out, all kinds of stuff. So Eve underscore was framed. Probably Instagram is where you're going to get information first, but I'm, I'm mm -hmm. everywhere. And please, if you're on Facebook, please go like my page and help me because the comments over there are actually hell. So if you're mm. into arguing with people on Facebook, go over there. <laughs> $5 oh, wow. again from Monkey at Typewriter. One more because I like Jimmy. Roll around in the compliment. You're a great producer. Aww. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Thanks, Will. I literally yes. got an email earlier from somebody who I, I know who it is, but they, they think I don't know who they are. Just trying to trash what a terrible producer I was because they're a bad <sighs> person who is hoping they could make me feel bad. No, wow. they can't. That's awful. It was a terrible producer. It was Donald Trump. Donald Trump sent an email. To tell Jimmy Snow, what a bad producer, bad, terrible, uh, frankly. <laughs> He's pretty amazing. damn good at that. That's well, thank really you, great. everyone, again, for tuning in. And as always, we go oh, 666, this the Antichrist uh, from Panda <laughs> Great Show. Thank you, Panda. And go ahead, Eve. Oh, from Douglas Maine. Love the live show. Thanks. Thank you, Douglas. Thank you guys. Thank you, Douglas. We love the live show too. Thanks to our crew, the mods, and then there's our patron producers as we scroll out and roll out. See you guys down the line. That's an original comment. Thank you to our call screener today was Flabbergasted. Also yesterday. Thank you, Flabbergasted. Dave and, and Eve, I sent you both clips uh, to your phones of the things from yesterday. That's it. Can't wait. Okay.